Hi there, I'm Nick Moema from Property Noma. Are you looking to build your property using alternative building technologies in Kenya? In this video, we'll talk about EPS panels. We'll talk about the three types of EPS panels that you'll find in the market, the time it takes to construct a typical residential house using EPS panels, the costs of this panel, and the benefits of using EPS panels as a construction material. But before we get started on the video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on upcoming videos. So with that said, let's get into it. EPS stands for Expanded Polystyrene. EPS panels are ready-made panels made from the factory. To make them, two main raw materials are needed. Expandable polystyrene beads and low-carbon zinc-coated galvanized steel wire. For the purposes of this video, we look at the following three parameters. 1. The types of EPS panels. 2. The time it takes to build a typical residential house. And 3. The cost of EPS panels versus the traditional brick and mortar system. The first parameter is the types of EPS panels. There are three types of EPS panels used in the construction of buildings. We have the single panel, the double panel, and the floor or roof panel. Let's start with the first type, the single panel. Here, the EPS core material is sandwiched between two mats of welded wire mesh. Once installed on site, the panels are short-created with concrete to give the panel structural strength. The single panels are used for walling and partitioning purposes. They are also used to construct single and multi-story buildings according to the local building regulations. Single panels can do up to four stories in height. The second type of panel is the double panel. It consists of two single panels joined together with a cavity in the middle. This cavity is poured with concrete on site and this is what gives the double panel its strength. The external faces of the double panels are finished in plaster. They are mostly used for load bearing and retaining walls. Double panels can do up to 20 stories in height. And last but not least, the third type of panel is the floor or roof panel. Like the name suggests, these are used to make concrete floor slabs and roofs. The cavities in these floor panels are used to make are used as molds to make beams. These beams are reinforced with steel to add more structural strength to them. The concrete is poured on site and the thickness can be varied according to the span of the slab and the project requirements. The second parameter is the time it takes to build a typical residential house. According to the National Housing Corporation, or NHC in short, to build a 100 square meter bungalow, this is the time it will take. To erect the panels, it will take five workers, two days to install the panels on site. For short crit plastering of the walls and pouring concrete on the roof, it will take five workers 10 days to complete the job. For finishing, it will take four workers 10 days to finish the job. This translates to roughly 22 days to complete a 100 square meter bungalow with five workers on site. This means that using EPS technology is faster than the traditional brick and mortar. It significantly saves on time. The third parameter is the cost involved versus the traditional brick and mortar. As you are looking to construct your home, the major saving you'll get with EPS panels technology is time. You'll also need less labor, and that same reduced labor will do the construction in less time. However, because of the consistent use of concrete, it might not be cheaper than brick and mortar. The single panels themselves cost between 4,000 and 6,000 shillings, depending on the thickness and the height of the panel. Floor or roof panels 
cost between 6,000 and 12,000 shillings, depending on their thickness. And these are the typical costs of the panel without short-critting or plattering the panels. At the end of the day, it may cost the same or more per square meter after plastering when compared to brick and mortar. But labor costs are significantly reduced because it's a faster building technology. You can, you, you can achieve labor savings of up to 30% depending on your construction project. So what are the benefits of, e of the EPS panels? The biggest advantage of using EPS panels as a construction material is its lightweight nature. Th this makes it easier to handle for the workers and faster to install and build. They are also fire resistant, energy efficient, earthquake and storm resistant. They are also a versatile technology meaning that they can incorporate flexible designs to suit your needs. You can adjust the height and the thickness of the panels to suit your project. To conclude, so EPS panels have been around for quite a while in Kenya. Some of the key players in the EPS industry include the National Housing Corporation or NHC, CMAX Kenya, EPS 3D panels and NextGen Solutions. I've included links to these companies at the description section below on the YouTube channel. It is a faster building technology that can help you save time and money on labor costs. But as a construction material, it costs almost the same as brick and mortar. So at the, at the end of the day, what matters is your budget and how you, you want your property to look and feel. If you like the aesthetics of a stone walled home, using EPS technology won't give you the intended result. So ultimately, it's up to you and your needs. So that's it for this video. But before you go, I'd like your input on this topic. What do you think about EPS panels as an alternative building technology? Have you ever used it before for any of your projects? Do you find it as a cheaper alternative to brick and mortar? Please leave your comment down below. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.